I was eating, breathing, sleeping Steve Jordan. Mm -hmm. That's all I would listen to, that's all I would play because, you know, I was starting to get an ear, develop an ear, so everything started to become easy. Yeah. But Steve Jordan stuff, I had to really take it apart and study. Yeah. And he did that for me, man. He blasted yeah, Man, he's dude. incredible, brother. Like the, the way he fused. He's incredible, stuff. man. Yeah. This dude is a this dude is a genius. He's, he's out there. Yeah. And I met him. Mm -hmm. So another another time I'll tell you a story. I know the Hyman told you a story about he got thrown in jail with, with Steve Jordan. Mm -hmm. But when I was I was about fifteen years old, Steve Jordan uh, was playing in Austin at a little bar. And I my dad wanted to take me. He wanted me to check Steve Jordan out. And uh, I wanted to go. I, I, I'm a fan of Steve Jordan. So there was about four people at the, at the salon, the bar, whatever it was, four people. Steve Jordan took a break. I went backstage and I met Steve Jordan. My dad, come on, man, let's go. And I was like, nah, dad, come on, man, let's go. So he dragged me back there. We met Steve Jordan, started talking. And I said, Steve, I said, can I play your accordion? You know, because as an accordion player, man, like yeah. you always want to check out everybody else's accordion, their gear, yeah. their guitar, whatever it is. Uh -huh. So I said, Steve, you know, Mr. Jordan, can I play your accordion? And how old were you then? Man, I don't remember, brother. Yeah. I was probably in... 15, I was 16? Probably like, yeah, okay. I was probably about 15, 16. Okay. And I asked him, and he said, no, you can't play my accordion. And I said, what the hell? You know, you're a kid. You know, yeah. you, I, I thought he was going to be, yeah, sure, go get it. The yeah. way, I thought he was going to be the way I am. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead, dale. Nah, man. He's like, no, you can't touch my accordion. He was serious, bro. Mm -hmm. He was serious. And I said, come on, man. Let me play your accordion. No, man. Don't touch my shit. Nobody, nobody, <laughs> no, I don't let anybody play my accordion. And my dad was freaked out. We were all freaked out, man. And this time, his sons were with him. And uh, his sons were playing uh, Rio Jordan. They're great musicians, yeah, too, bro. Those, those are, those are uh, cool-ass cool guys. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, not all yeah that, brother. Yeah. And he didn't want to let me play, but I kept on. I kept on. Nesio, come on, man, let me play it. Finally, dude, he said, well, go get it, man, go get it. It's on the stage. So I went to the stage, I picked up as an accordion, and uh, I started playing. I started playing, and I said, fuck, man, this shit is incredible. The action, the way it felt, it felt like nothing I've ever played before. Yeah. And that's what he told me. He said, it plays by itself, right? Yeah. And I said, yeah, man. Yeah. It's, it's played by that guy would get into a studio and do every single instrument. Bro. Everything, brother. Yeah. Everything. And Sing knew, the harmonies, do the drums. You know what bass. freaked me out with Esteban Jordan is the way he was incorporating effects into yeah. the sound of yeah. the accordion. He'll put a delay yeah. on it. He would hit it where it would just yeah, be man. perfect. And, you know, there was nobody doing it. That guy was way ahead of his He's time. He's still ahead man. of his time. You yeah. still can't do that right now. Yeah. <laughs> People look at you crazy and shit. Yeah, you man. Know? Yeah. Your so. music. Tell me a bit about your music, bro. Uh, you know, um, what, what, uh, what, what inspires you for the music? What kind of music would you or what would you call your music, bro? Man, I don't know what to call it, brother. Like, you, you can't classify my music mm -hmm. because, you know, like, uh, like I'm telling you, I'm Tejano. There's no, there's no going around it. I'm Tejano. Mm -hmm. I'm Tejano, Chicano, Mexicano. But, you know, a lot of people will hear my music and they'll say, well, that's not Tejano. That doesn't sound like Maz. That's a, that doesn't sound like David y Garza. That, you're right, it doesn't. Like I, but I'm Tejano. Mm -hmm. But the music that I make is different, man. Like I, I work on vibes. I work, work on uh, what people like. You know, when I first started, my first record, when you interviewed me at Que Pasa, <laughs> I, came, I came to you with a CD, man, and you gave me a chance. You interviewed me, you and Raymond. It was, it was, it was a great time, About man. ten years ago, Yeah, man. brother, it was a long-ass yeah. time ago. Yeah. And that was the first time I was here in the Valley. But when my first CD, when I came out with it, it was a capirotada of music, man. Mm -hmm. I had conjunto, I had zydeco, yeah. I had uh, uh, jazz, I had tejano, I had cumbias. Yeah. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You threw it all out there, I didn't there, know what man. I was doing, brother. They but didn't I, streamline but I, you. Nah, man. but I wanted to show people what I could do. You know, uh -huh. I wanted to show them that I was a, a good musician and that, you know, I had talent and I wanted people to see what I could do. Uh -huh. And uh, so it, I didn't think anything of it, man. It, I figured if I sell 10 copies, it didn't matter, man. If those uh -huh. 10 people that bought it liked it and they were happy, that's all, that's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. It meant everything to me. Yeah. You know, I didn't get into it for money or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I got into it because I love the music. Yeah. And, you know, I've always had a passion for it. 
And uh, little by little, it took off, and it took off. And I started playing little shows around town. Um, you know, when I, I played at a club in Austin called the Honol Ranch years ago, 2010, when I, when I came out. And I would play, and I would start out with jazz songs, and the people would be, they'd look at me crazy, like, what the fuck is this dude playing? Mm -hmm. And then I started playing cumbias. Yeah. And I started doing that. And I'd see the girls go nuts. Mm -hmm. And I, I would see the dance floor, everything was packed. And I would, I would, you know, look at my guys and this is the shit we need to do. Mm -hmm. This is what I need to do. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the new movement. So I started playing more cumbias. I started, I found my niche, man. And yeah. I started growing. My, my female audience grew. You know, when I started, I used to have a lot of, a lot of guy fans. You know, uh, they were accordion fans. They were mu musicians. Yeah. And uh, after a while, man, a few years, started playing more cumbias, man. I had 80% yeah. women in the crowd. Until this day, thanks to God, man. You know. And your have... name gets out there with the girls, bro. Bob, man. Because you know, they have more God. followers on Instagram than any guys, man. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Brother. And then yeah, they man. put your, you know, your yeah. picture up there, and then all the other girls see, and all the other guys see. Yeah, it. man. I, you and know, then I'm, the guys go to the show because all the girls are putting you on Instagram, and they know is. the girls are going to yeah. be there. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. That's now the I, trick. Don't I'm starting. You, don't give everybody the the, the secrets. <laughs> I'm starting to understand why you have a semi full of equipment, man, yeah, right, and yeah. a bus, and you yeah, know, man. that's like that's not even seen in the Tejano industry or nah, even Norteño industry yeah, anymore, bro. bro. Like having yeah. A semi of equipment. Do you actually take all your the the production and sound equipment and all Everything. that to all your shows or everywhere, bro? Is it is it is it like that all the time or is it all just... the time? It doesn't yeah. matter where I'm at. If I come to the valley, I go to Arizona. If I go to Michigan, Florida, I'm taking everything because mm -hmm. that's what I believe. You know, when I when I started investing in all my production, all my stuff, I started seeing the industry. You know, like you're saying, you start studying the industry, you study other artists, you see what's happening out there. And I would see that, man, it's, we're not giving our fans their money's worth. You know, we want people to spend $20, $25, $30, but you, these bands are giving them a $5 show. How do you expect to grow? How do you expect to gain new fans if you're not giving them shit? You mm -hmm. sound like shit, you look like shit, mm -hmm. and, you, you, and then you're mad that people don't show up to mm -hmm. your gig. So I started investing, man. When I'd make a little money here and there, I'd put my money away, and I'd buy a few lights. I'd buy a smoke machine. I'd buy... You know, a sound a sound console, mm -hmm. and I started. You know, we started renting. We started taking off, having gigs. So when I'd I'd rent a PA, I'd have to rent a sound system. Yeah. You know, and we talk to different people. Oh yeah, man, I have incredible sound. I have this. I have that. And we show up, and they don't have shit. None mm -hmm. of this shit works. Yeah. You know, these mics. Are You're at the apart. mercy of whatever yeah, they brother, got, and dude. It's, and it's too late. We got to do the show because we yeah. go on in two hours. Yeah. You know, and then it sounds like shit. And the fans don't see that. They see you uh -huh. on stage and then they yeah. go on saying, man, these yeah, sound like shit suck. tonight. Yeah, yeah. they suck, man. Yeah. You know, I see it a lot. You know, you still see it today.